recording. Start. Start. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this was such a good chapter. More good chapter. Yeah. Hi, audience. Yeah. Hello. Um, yeah, and just uh, wait, wait, wait. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah. Hello and welcome to the No One Ask You podcast. For this particular series, I am joined by my wonderful co-host. That Don Kitty. Kitty and I are both going into the story completely new with almost no knowledge of the story or world. Each segment we intend to cover what happens in each new chapter and discuss our experience along the way. This is Miss Bonner Bridge, a blind read through. And today we will be covering chapter 24. 24! Wee! Yeah. But before we get into chapter 24, I had um, a Vinsight carry over from the last chapter. I finally associated in my mind the pulling that the Lord Ruler is feeling in the North with the pushing and pulling metals of allomancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That Marsh describes. So I started just playing around with this idea in my mind of the deepness as a metal. We still haven't heard anything about allomancy in the epigraphs. I'm wondering if whatever the Lord Ruler does with the deepness is what creates allomancy. So just, yeah. it feels like there's something there, but I don't know I'm with know you on what. that. that as, as far as I can go, is just whatever happens with the deepness results in allomancy. Yeah. Or, yeah, or maybe has has a, um, happens because of the core of allomancy. I don't know. They, they're involved. That's what, that's all I can say. <laughs> they're involved. I, I do believe that. Yeah. And then... I, I was just wondering how the 11th metal is connected to it. I think we know that it is religious doctrine that the Lord Ruler gifted Allomancy to the nobles or something to that effect, right? Indeed. So I, I was wondering what role the 11th metal plays in all of this and whether or not Yedin in one of the less good chapters when he makes the foolish mistake of thinking that Kelsier is capable of gifting his powers to others. I wonder if that mistake might not be so far off for what mm -hmm. the 11th metal actually does. I was wondering when you brought that up, because I didn't go there and then you brought it up. The thing that I was wondering is, could it take away powers? Because then I was thinking mm. that could be a way to, that could be, be a way to, um, to get rid of the Lord ruler, but yeah, that is a theory that I'm interested in that has merits. Yes. I just didn't land on it by myself, so. Hmm. Other than that, we got, oh man, we got a really nice, gentle moment with Vin and the crew this chapter. And, and go on. Sorry, the way that I was thinking about it as well, that we had that, that warm and fuzzy, but remember... The last by the end of last chapter, we were very scared about what was going <laughs> to happen in this. We were like, there's gonna be some sort of attack because what are they gonna find when they get there? Because of we had all these little signals that were saying that the crew is gonna be attacked. So or, yeah. or was, you know, like was gonna be found out or something like that. We were very scared for for them. And then we yeah. get into this. So the whole time I read this, I had anxiety. So as much as I was like, oh, I love this, I love this. I thank you, George R. R. Martin, because I am, am <laughs> very scared. Immediately I'm seeing all this love and stuff, and I'm just like, oh, someone's gonna die. Someone's gonna die. <laughs> and and in, yeah. and then eventually, at least luckily, I'm reading the, the chapters several times. So I get to calm down. <laughs> And enjoy the the warm fuzzies. Yes, that, that, and I that we get there. and I think the warm fuzzies in this chapter are expertly and importantly placed because of what happens at the end of this exactly. chapter. I think I signals 
an end to any of the quieter moments Mm -hmm. left in this book. I think from this point on, it will be a race to the finish line. Yep. I think so too. Uh, I think it's just, it's just gone off now. Yes. And I have so many questions right now regarding the specific circumstances of why it is now a race to the finish. Mm -hmm. Um, I was so excited for the, (laughs) I've been hyping it up this entire series. We were going to get a Ham Vin mentorship. And mm-hmm. oh, it felt like it was just ripped away right at the good part. <laughs> exactly. I loved that. I actually loved that. I was because I was like, yeah, cool. This is it. And I'm, you know what? I was marching along, ready to have this experience. And that that actually really helped with the shock of the end. <laughs> yeah. It made it actually. It, it made that feel, that feeling even deeper. It was great. I loved that. Yeah. And but we did get some some lessons, but we just didn't get it in practice i was like imagining these sort of things and it was very it was a very good curveball adventure all theory all theory theory. no practical uh trying outs yeah (laughs) but she'll keep it in mind we know she'll keep it in mind yeah and and i don't want her to have the opportunity to use it anytime soon but i know it will it's coming but hey let's get into the epigraph and get into the chapter. We unless shall. There's anything else, and unless there's anything else you want to discuss. I, look, I forget about a third of everything I want to say in basically all of these chap episodes. So <laughs> we'll say find out in- next week, folks, what I've forgotten this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in next week's intro. <laughs> in the end, I must trust in myself. I have seen men who have beaten from themselves the ability to recognize truth and goodness, and I do not think I am one of them. I can still see the tears in a young child's eyes and feel pain at his suffering. If I ever lose this, then I will know that I've passed beyond hope of redemption. Ooh. I I think he he moves beyond hope of redemption. Uh, Seems like it. Spoiler alert. (laughs) Yeah. So... Uh, I had filled in the blanks such that he has been alive for generations at -hmm. this point. I suspect uh, that corruption is taking place and he's possibly forgetting just because he's been alive for so long, forgetting what it means to be human, truly Mm -hmm. human. And he, he realizes that he has changed completely. And this is him slowly turning into the Lord Ruler. As we know and hate him today. Yes. Yes. Also, we can relate this to Kelsia, his dis- descent. Because we, we, we get comparisons in this chapter between Kelsia and the Lord Ruler. And you wonder about what would... You, you feel like he would be... It. <laughs> okay, so Vin basically says that she's, she, she's seen the Lord Ruler descend. Okay, into who he becomes in this in the logbook that she's read. And we kind of have to believe that Kelsey is different in any case, because I I, I don't know. I'm sitting there thinking I can't imagine Kelsey being like not stopping with the the thought of a a child, you know, crying or something like that. Yeah, but we'll get into it. Uh, hmm? Would Kelsey kill a crying noble child? Ooh. Mm. It, I mean, we, we, we saw Kelsey. Look, it wasn't a child, but we saw Kelsey. This person deserves to die. Like, mm. um, add a couple centuries onto that, like you said as well, that, that also there's time for your humanity to erode. What happens to your psyche? What happens to your moral values, the value of life? And so, so yeah. That kind of change can happen over a long time. But then again, I don't know how much of this logbook goes into, like, where, what, what is the time? We still don't know the timing of the logbook. No. But it was a huge, it was a very big book. So I guess it, it makes sense. It could be quite a long time. Hmm. We shall find out. More questions always. Yeah. 
I hope we find out. Jeez, at least by the end of this book. Come on. Please. Yeah. And we're in the end game now. Let us know. Come on. Kelsier was already at the shop when Vin and Sazed arrived. He sat with ham clubs and spook in the kitchen, enjoying a late night drink. Ham, you're back. Yup. It seems like you've been gone forever. You're telling me. Kelsier chuckled, rising to refill his drink. Ham's a bit tired of playing general. I had to wear a uniform, Ham complained, stretching. He now wore his customary vest and trousers. Even Plantation Scott don't have to deal with that kind of torture. Try wearing a formal gown sometime, Vin said, seating herself. She'd brushed off the front of her dress, and it didn't look half bad as she'd feared. The black ash still showed up a bit against the dark fabric, and the fibers were rough where she'd rubbed against stone, but both were barely noticeable. It seems that you've turned into a proper young lady while I was gone. Hardly, Vin said as Kelsier handed her a cup of wine. She held it up, raised briefly, then took a sip. Ooh, Vin is drinking wine. This is a diff a, 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 one of the first little signals of she's comfortable. Because right? yes. we're getting a whole bunch of these now. This is a whole bunch of juxtaposition between what she was like before and what she is now. She, yes, looks, she, the... she paused and she took a drink of the wine. Yes, the journey. She's come so far. Mm -hmm. So much of Reen's voice in her head my mind goes to that line, is it a good enough reason to get you killed? And I'm reading this chapter and I imagine she could reasonably have the thought of, if I died tomorrow, I would die happy. And yeah, that, exactly. Yeah, that's what I get out of this chapter. And there's, mm -hmm. like, I don't want her to die. <laughs> but uh, I, it makes me feel good that she's so content. And and it's a good beat to to get to get now because shit's shit's going off, man. Things are going crazy after this. So we yeah. have this nice warm and fuzzy, but that's before the chaos. So now we we reminded of what we're fighting for. Once yes, the shit is the savant. Yeah, Mistress yeah. Fien is being modest, Master Hammond. Sazed said, taking a seat. She's growing quite proficient at courtly arts, better than many actual nobles that I have known. Vin flushed and Ham laughed again. Humility? Vin? Where do you ever learn a bad habit like that? Not from me, certainly, Kelsier said, offering Sazed a cup of wine. The terraceman raised his hand in a respectful refusal. Of course she didn't get it from you, Kel. Maybe Spook taught her. He seems to be the only one in this crew who knows how to keep his mouth shut, eh, kid? Spook flushed, obviously trying to avoid looking at Vin. We'll have to deal with him sometime. But not tonight. Kelsey is back, and Ellen's not a murderer. This is a night to relax. Ah, what'd you think of that one? Uh, I don't know what she means by deal with him. Like, uh, I, I don't assume know what, like, it means straight. respect. Yeah. Yeah. Turn him down. Yeah, yeah turn mm. him down. But should um, she? I mean, it's not going to work out with Ellen. Mm, it, it's you know what she's just gonna go and make her mistakes with Ellen, and then then we'll see what happens yeah. she's she needs to be proven it needs to be proven to her that it won't work okay because there could be yeah. a chance okay also just by the way immediately when ham said where do you ever learn a bad habit like that immediately my thought was not calcia and then calcia goes and says not for me certainly that i enjoyed that little like just exactly i just enjoyed yes. the knowing exactly what the i know some people be like oh that's so predictable but i really enjoyed that i enjoyed the predictability because i know the characters i mean this is one of brandon sanderson's strengths as a writer is this banter this uh and forth, light yeah. airiness this mm -hmm. archetypal moment so to speak mm -hmm. yeah now and look vin doesn't have to be with spook if she doesn't want to i just mm -hmm. don't think turning him down because you think you'll be with ellen or have a shot with them is necessarily the best course of action well you don't so, want her playing them both like i true. don't want that so true. i would like, rather she's she's honest i really don't want her to kind of i, I just wouldn't want, want her to be putting him down as if it's like never gonna happen bro 
Well, I don't know. Uh, I think she also, would uh, be polite about it. Yeah, I think she would. But um, I think she'd also, um, she's, I, I, I just want the door to be open still. But, you know. Yeah. Anyway. You're, you're, you know what? You've influenced me. I'm shipping these two. <laughs> Because also he's he's going to go through some sort of growth arc or whatever, so it's going to be like, oh, suddenly Spook's got shoulders out here, and you're just like, uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not, I know you love the voice I do for him, but I'm kind of regretting giving him such a silly voice. <laughs> well, I didn't know gonna, he'd be such a big character. But he but he also talks not he speaks he says he speaks in English this time. This, this yes. Stuff. Let's get to it. Spook's actually. arc this book has been learning to speak. Uh, I I love it, and also I, it's going to be quite fun trying to figure out. I, I want to see. Are we going to try and figure out what the hell they're saying when we get there? Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay, it's going to be fun. Okay, let's go. So it's a night to relax for Vin, and you see the way. Also, sorry. So yes, we're talking about Spook, and she needs to to, to deal with him. But she's like, listen, her her two priorities is like Kelsey is back, and Ellen's not a murderer. So now she can relax. That's what she wanted most in her life at that point. So, yeah, you can see where her priorities lie. <laughs> yes. Footsteps sounded on the stairs, and a moment later, Doxon strolled into the room. Aparte, and no one sent for me? You seemed busy. Besides, we know you're too responsible to sit around and get drunk with a bunch of miscreants like us. Someone has to keep this crew running, Doxon said, lightheartedly pouring himself a drink. He paused, frowning at Ham. That vest looks familiar. I ripped the arms off my uniform coat. You didn't! Finn said with a smile. <laughs> Ham nodded, looking self-satisfied. Doxon sighed, continuing to fill his cup. Ham, those things cost money. Everything costs money. But what is money? A physical representation of the abstract concept of effort. Well, wearing that uniform for so long was a pretty mean effort. I'd say that this vest and I are even now. Doxon just rolled his eyes in the main room. The shop's front door opened and closed, and Vin heard Breeze bid hello to the apprentice on watch. By the way, Dox, Kelsier said, leaning with his back against a cupboard, I'm going to need a few physical representations of the concept of effort myself. I'd like to rent a small warehouse to conduct some of my informant meetings. This is just Brandon Sanderson writing dialogue the best mm -hmm. way he can. Yeah, I like that that little, okay, fine, I'm going to use the, the representation of it, but uh, that was really funny. I like Quick it. and witty Quick and yeah. heartwarming. Mm. Uh, that can probably be arranged, assuming we keep Vin's wardrobe budget under control. I, what did you do to that gown, young lady? Vin flushed, scrunching down in her chair. Perhaps it's a bit more noticeable than I thought. You have to get used to dirty clothing, Docs. Vin's back on Mistborn duty as of this evening. Interesting. Might I suggest that she avoid fighting three steel inquisitors at once this time? I'll do my best. Breeze strolled over to the table and chose a seat with his characteristic decorum. The portly man raised his dueling cane, pointing it at him. I see that my period of intellectual respite has come to an end. I thought up a couple beastly questions while I was gone, and I've been saving them just for you, Breeze. I'm dying of anticipation, Breeze said. He turned his cane toward Lesterborns. Spook, drink! Spook rushed over and fetched Breeze a cup of wine. He's such a fine lad, Breeze noted, accepting the drink. I like to imagine that he directed that toward Vin. What do you think? <laughs> I, I thought he just nods towards uh, towards Spook, but uh, <laughs> considering what we want, <laughs> we directed it. And he could, <laughs> yeah, he, I don't think he did, but it would it would be funny if that's exactly, you know, if he was in the know, <laughs> and he and he was like, because he knew what happened with the, the handkerchief, or whatever, and he like raises his eyebrows and like the, the comedy <laughs> version of this would be like, hey, he's a fun <laughs> lad, isn't he? Eh? But no, I don't right. think that. I don't think that that's what happened, but if if we're to place our own uh, emphasis on on that note, why not? Look, it it doesn't say that it doesn't happen. Haha. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's true. I barely have to nudge him elementally. If only the rest of you ruffians were so accommodating. Spook frowned. 
nicing the knot on the plank without? I have no idea what you said, child. So I'm simply going to pretend it was coherent, then move on. We're not going to do that. What does, <laughs> what, what do we think it means? Uh, okay, nicing the knot on the playing without. Uh, I think he's like, he's, he's playing nice. Is he saying he is playing nice? He, he wouldn't, he's just playing nice with, with Breeze. That's why he's doing it. It's, it's not that I'm. Um, uh, it's not that he uh, he can't resist or can't say no. He's just being nice, uh, but he could stop. That's I don't know. That's kind of the sort of sense I got. Like yeah, maybe, I don't know. Uh, and like not without playing nice. Yeah, there's there's not so knots there. Well, not really. You, it's just one. You're not so nice when uh, when we don't play along. Yes, there. I think that's what that works. That's much better. Hmm. Nice. So it's about you took it. That it's about his nicing. Hmm. Kelsey rolled his eyes, losing the stress on the nip, knotting without the needing of care. I assume that was something like uh, he's helpless. But what, like, oh, with, he's with. Uh, like, like he's totally helpless without someone else doing uh, his bidding. Okay, okay. Losing the stress on the nip. So maybe he's. He's stressing at work, but not without the needing of care. I like nothing without the needing of care. I can understand a little bit. So he mm. does need care or something. Okay, then this this is this is too much. Yeah. Here we go. Next. Yeah, look, I I really don't get any of this conversation. <laughs> I'm with Breeze. Uh, riding the rile of the rids to the right. Riding the rile of the rids to the right. I I don't think we're supposed to know at this point. <laughs> He's ridding himself of something. I don't know. He's got to rid himself of something. Riding mm. the rile. He's got to get rid of this riliness. He's got to stop riling me up. Anyway. Okay. Suggestions in the chat, please. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what are you two babbling about? Same, Breeze. Uh, uh, we, we're, we're wandering. <laughs> yes. Wasing the was of brightness, nip the having of wishing of this. Okay, I think he wishes he was bright. I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> Ever was the doing of this. He was always like this. Yeah. Ever wasing the wish of having the have, Ham added with a smile. Brighting the wish of wasing the not. I got nothing. He Breeze is always wanting something. Mm-hmm. Ever was in the wish of having the have. He, like, <laughs> he always wishes he, he for something. <laughs> ever was, yeah. Ever was in. I like that word. That wording. Ever was in. He always was. So I like that. I love I love this language and I really want to understand it more. Breeze turned to Dachshund with exasperation. I believe our companions have finally lost their minds, my dear friend. Dachshund shrugged. Then with a perfectly straight face, he said, Wasing not of wasing is. Breeze sat dumbfounded, and the room burst into laughter. Breeze rolled his eyes indignantly, shaking his head and muttering about the crew's gross childishness. So I'd like to read through that once more, a bit less of our commentary, because we've been okay. like, huh. uh, just once for everyone. Okay. Spook frowned, nicing the knot on the playing without. I have no idea what you said, child, so I'm simply going to pretend it was coherent, then move on. Losing the stress on the nip, nodding without the needing of care. Riding the rile of the rids to the right. What are you two babbling about? Wasing the wise of brightness, nip the having of wishing of this. Ever wasing the doing of this. Ever wasing the wish of having the have, brighting the wish of wasing the not. I believe our companions have finally lost their minds, dear friend. Wasing not of wasing is. Breeze sat dumbfounded and the room burst into laughter. Breeze rolled his eyes indignantly, shaking his head and muttering about the crew's gross childishness. Vin nearly choked on her wine as she laughed. What did you even say? I'm not sure. It just sounded right. I don't think you said anything, Docs. Oh, he said something. It just didn't mean anything. 
Whoa! And that English, our friend. Hey, Spook. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well done, Spook. What a great, like he, he speaks it. Wow. That's great. <laughs> Good man. Kelsier laughed. And that's true pretty much all of the time. I've found you can ignore half of what Docs tells you and not miss much, except for maybe the occasional complaint that you're spending too much. Hey, once again, must I point out that someone has to be responsible? Honestly, the way you people go through boxings. Vince smiled. Even Doxon's complaints seemed good-natured. Club sat quietly by the side wall, looking as curmudgeonly as ever, but Vin caught sight of a slight smile on his lips. Kelsey arose and opened another bottle of wine, refilling cups as he told the crew about the Ska Army's preparations. Vin felt contented. As she sipped at her wine, she caught sight of the open doorway leading into the darkened workshop. She imagined for a mere moment that she could see a figure out in the shadows, a frightened wisp of a girl, untrusting, suspicious. The girl's hair was ragged and short, and she wore a simple, untucked, dirty shirt and a pair of brown trousers. Vin remembered that second night in Clubs' shop, when she had stood out in the dark workroom watching the others share light night conversations. Had she really been that girl? One who would hide in the cold darkness, watching the laughter and friendship with a hidden envy, but never daring to join it? Kelsier made some particularly witty comment, drawing laughter from the entire room. You're right, Kelsier. This is better. Ah, that was mm -hmm. so good. Yeah. You know, I, I was thinking like, oh, why don't why did we have to have the conscious thing of her looking at the, the door and thinking all of that? But I, she has that sort of self-awareness. I would want her mm. to consciously ha notice that she has change, changed. It wouldn't be just a little uh, subtextual nod towards it. I want her to also personally see the growth that she's gone through. That That's important to me. Yeah, I thought it was very powerful. Yeah, like she, she's, and you go through it with her as she describes that. You're like, yeah, we, we did. We remember that. We were, we were thinking about that as we read all of this. This is the kind of banter and things that you were not part of before. And now you are. So yeah, I loved that. I really did. Also, when and in, just going back to the, when my first read through, I was scared because I was like, whoa. I love this. I love this so much. This is all going to be shattered, isn't it? And I thought it was going to be shattered a lot more immediately than it was. Mm. So, I, But that doesn't mean I'm disappointed in the way it was broken because it needed to be. I understand it. Yeah. Ah, so good. So sweet. And so warm. Yeah. And I don't think it crosses into cheesy territory. I, th I think it's very no. appropriate. Yeah. Love it. She wasn't like them yet. Not completely. Six months couldn't silence Reen's whispers, and she couldn't see herself ever being as trusting as Kelsier was. But she could finally understand, at least a little bit, why he worked the way he did. All right, Kelsier said, pulling over a chair and sitting on it the wrong way. It looks like the army will be ready on schedule, and Marsh is in place. We need to get this plan moving. Vin, news from the ball? House Tekiel is vulnerable. Its allies are scattering, and the vultures are moving in. Some whisper that debts and lost business will force the tech yield to sell off their keep by the end of the month. There's no way they can afford to continue paying the Lord Ruler's keep tax. Which effectively eliminates one entire great house from the city. Most of the tech yield nobility, including Mistings and Mistborn, will have to move to outer plantations to try to recoup their losses. Nice, Ham noted. Any noble houses they could frighten out of the city would make seizing it that much easier. That still leaves nine great houses in the city, Breeze noted. Uh, I will say, I also want to comment, Vin is so one of the crew when she mm -hmm. delivers that info. Like, she's there. She is professional. She is mm -hmm. competent. She's made Delivering it. what is... Yeah, she's made it. She, she's she's shown that she has been a valuable asset, which is what she wanted. Yeah. But they've started killing each other at night. That's only one step away from open war. I suspect we'll see an exodus start here pretty soon. Anyone who isn't willing to risk assassination to maintain dominance in Luthadel will leave town for a couple of years. The stronghouses don't seem very afraid, though. 
They're still throwing balls anyway. Yours says they're still throwing balls anyway? Mm-hmm. Mine says, mm-hmm. or at least they're still throwing balls. Hmm. Not that big of a difference, but neat. Yeah. And then this next line I thought was like dystopian cool. Oh, they'll keep doing that right up until the end. Balls make great excuses to meet with allies and keep an eye on enemies. House wars are primarily political, and so they demand political battlefields. I like that. The wording of that. Yeah, this visions of the Titanic. uh, This idea of them all at balls while there's just this massive war going on outside. Mm. But I, what, what I was, uh, no, I like that as well. That's for sure. That that was the cool dystopian thing. But that even in terms of the, I like the visual of house wars are primarily political. And so they demand political battlefields. So it's like, mm. it is a battlefield where those balls are uh, a battlefield as well of their own kind. I like that imagery as well. Yes. Vin nodded. Ham. We need to keep an eye on the Luthadel garrison. You're still planning to visit your soldier contacts tomorrow? I can't promise anything, but I should be able to reestablish some connections. Give me a bit of time and I'll find out what the military is up to. Good. I'd like to go with him. With Ham? I haven't trained with a thug yet. Ham could probably show me a few things. You already know how to burn pewter. We've practiced that. I know. How could she explain? Hammond practiced with Pewter exclusively. He was bound to be better at it than Kelsier. Oh, stop pestering the child. She's probably merely tired of balls and parties. Let her go be a normal street urchin for a bit. Fine, Kelsier said, rolling his eyes. He poured himself another drink. Breeze, how well could your soothers manage if you were gone for a little while? I am, of course, the most effective member of the team, but I did train the others. They'll recruit effectively without me, especially now that stories about the survivor are getting so popular. We need to talk about that, by the way, Kel, Doxon said, frowning. I'm not sure if I like all this mysticism about you and the 11th Metal. We can discuss it later. Why ask about my men? Have you finally grown so jealous of my impeccable fashion sense that you've decided to have me disposed of? I love that. I'm sorry. I just love the breeze of that of it all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And also with, Every- with the voice that you give him, it, it works even better. Yay. Everyone is so themselves this chapter. Right. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And effectively so. Yeah. You might say that. I was thinking of sending you to replace Yedin in a few months. Replace Yedin? You mean for me to lead the army? And then I pretty much had that exact same reaction. Yeah, like, what? Whoa, Kelsey, what the hell? I don't need Android. I, look, I, I, um, maybe I'm still salty about his, his actions back with the army. I'm like, what is your plan here? What are you doing? Well, uh, I want to know. Well, it's funny that you say that because you just put a thought in my mind. Because this whole week, I've been trying to figure out what his game in doing Mm. this was going to be. And I could not figure it out. Why breathe? Uh, And then then I kept thinking, well, it doesn't really matter. Because by the end of the chapter, I think it's pretty fair to say that it's not going to happen at all anyway but it occurred yeah. to me that it could be a sign that Kelsier is actually not very confident yes. about the morale of the army and so he that's wanted to send Breeze. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah, to that that that's exactly how that he would want let want their, their him to be there to make the right feelings felt. Which does yeah. make me think we we did we would probably need sort of high level soothers and and uh what? What are the rioters? Um, it would have probably been a, a plan, good plan to have them there. But then again, like one or two there, that would be good. But then again, you also, well, that means more people that you would have to trust with manipulating the army. And I don't think they would appreciate knowing that they're being manipulated that way, taking it apart. Yeah. Of. So, yeah, I can understand why it didn't happen. But now it will. And like that's that Kelsey is like, okay, well, now I can do it. Now, now I should. I know that I, I agree. I don't think it happens after this, but this it does indicate to me that 
Kelsey had some sort of plan that would work yeah, on that or, morale day. Yeah, I, I think it might have been nerves. Mm -hmm. But it's it's still so... Either way, it, it doesn't look good. Yeah. Um, it looks weird. It's like, what, why? Like, it, a nice way for him to to try and, and explain it away, but it, no, it's not... It wouldn't sit with anyone. I don't think it, he... I don't think he's hidden his intentions as well as he thinks. Yeah. From the background, my dear man, I don't stand out in front. Why, I'd be a general. Do you have any idea how ludicrous that sounds? Just consider it. Our recruitment should be mostly done by then, so you might be most effective if you were to go to the caves and let Yedin come back to prepare his contacts here. I suppose. Also, question. Yes, Breeze works from the background. So I would say, yeah, let him go and just supervise Yedin. You don't have to swap them out. The, this, the thing of him swapping them out does make me think there might be some other plan that I'm missing. So that's, so I'm like, well, why do you need Breeze to be away? Uh, I, mm. I don't know. There was something else there. but Because I'm like, it would have been actually more, more of a, it would make way more sense and Breeze would be way more on board if we said, hey, uh, Breeze, I, I need you to go there. And obviously, we, I, I guess Kelsey doesn't want the crew to hear this, but I, I need you to go there and keep an eye on on the army with the Eden. Like, that makes sense. Why on earth would you swap them out? That's just weird. Yeah. What is, what is in his mind? <laughs> Regardless, I don't think I've had nearly enough wine. Spook, be a good lad and run down to the cellar for another bottle, eh? The boy nodded and the conversation returned to lighter topics. Ben settled back in her chair, feeling the warmth of the coal stove at the side of the room, content for the moment to simply enjoy the peace of not having to worry, fight, or plan. If only Reen could have known something like this. She thought, idly fingering her earring. Perhaps then things would have been different for him. For us. Ah, excellent yeah, was, yeah, that was also such a... Like, you're like, yeah, that's actually our first in a little... In quite a while, that's our first little hint towards, you know, maybe maybe Reen is reconciled. Like, it, it's reconcilable. I don't know. Maybe Reen had mm. his, his reasons or whatever. It's just like... And it is also part of Vin's sad story that she could have had a good brother maybe um mm -hmm. but she didn't yeah and well, she's finally starting to realize that other people are different yes and there is a different way to live and reen isn't just right like he it's just that he never experienced this that's it it's not yeah. like oh reen's just reen reen knows the right way of the world it's more like no he didn't experience this so how could he know you know, the, the blame on him is gone. It's kind of just like, oh, that's lamentable. And I enjoyed that. I was like, Phew, cool. Yes. Nice warm and fuzzy. Yeah. I think that's going to be our last good moment up until the end mm -hmm. now. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, it's going to be our last. I mean, there'll be good moments, I, I hope. Little snippets, but that's the warmest we're going to be. That's what I think. Yeah. Ham and Vin left the next day to visit the Luthadel garrison. After so many months of playing a noblewoman, Vin had thought that it would feel strange to wear street clothing again, yet it really didn't. True, it was a bit different. She didn't have to worry about sitting properly or walking so that her dress didn't brush against dirty walls or floors, yet the mundane clothing still felt natural to her. She wore a simple pair of brown trousers and a loose white shirt tucked in at the waist, then overlaid by a leather vest. Her still lengthening hair was pulled up under her cap. Casual passers-by might think her a boy, though Ham didn't seem to think it mattered, and it really didn't. Vin had grown accustomed to having people study and evaluate her, but no one on the street bothered to give her a glance. Shuffling ska workers, unconcerned low noblemen, even high-placed ska-like clubs, they all ignored her. I'd almost forgotten what it was like to be invisible. Fortunately, the old attitudes, looking down when she walked, stepping out of people's way, slouching to make herself inconspicuous, returned to her easily. Becoming Vin the street scoff felt as simple as remembering an old familiar melody she used to hum. This really is just another disguise. My makeup is a light coat of ash, carefully rubbed on my cheeks. My gown is a pair of trousers, rubbed to make them seem old and well used. 
Who then was she really? Vin the urchin? Volet the lady? Neither. Did any of her friends really know her? Did she even really know herself? Remember when we were going, wow, Vin has friends. And she was going, yeah. I have friends. Woo. So now she's like, okay, we've accepted that we have friends. Now she's wondering, hey, wait, do my friends know me? It's like, yeah, you have friends. Okay, that steps have been taken. <laughs> yes. And so much of this story really has been her figuring right. out who she is. Mm -hmm. I don't think you know, she it, knows yet. She still doesn't know. She's trying to figure it out. But this is her question. I agree. And I like her her self reflection. I think she's she is that kind. We've had enough of that. She is that kind of character. So her her having these sort of questions about herself is not far fetched at all. Yes, I've missed this place. Ham said, walking happily beside her. Ham always seemed happy. She couldn't imagine him dissatisfied, despite what he'd said about his time leading the army. It's kind of strange he said, turning to Vin. He didn't walk with the same careful air of despondence that Vin had cultivated. He didn't seem to care that he stood out from other ska. I probably shouldn't miss this place. I mean, Luthadel is the dirtiest, most crowded city in the final empire, but there's also something about it. Is this where your family lives? No. They live in a smaller city outside of town. My wife is a seamstress there. She tells people I'm in the Luthadel garrison. Don't you miss them? Of course I do. It's hard. I only get to spend a few months at a time with them, but it's better this way. If I were to get killed on a job, the Inquisitors would have a tough time tracking my family. I haven't told even Cal which city they live in. You think the Ministry would go to that much trouble? I mean, you'd already be dead. I'm a misting, Finn. That means that all of my descendants will have some noble blood. My children might turn out to be Alamancers, as might their children. No, when the Inquisitors kill a Misting, they make certain to wipe out his children, too. The only way to keep my family safe is to stay away from them. Okay, that's mm. that's a line. Yeah. Because how many stories do you get in which a character is the son in that scenario? And they have, like, mm. these big emotional confrontations with their father that they haven't met in mm -hmm. years who uses that justification. Yeah. So that's a, that's like a this big is the other line side. for me. Yeah. Yeah. And also bringing it back to the epigraph, this, this empire of the Lord rulers kills children. Yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't even make that connection. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're so smart. I, I only made it now. So it's, it, if, if I was doing the voices and things, I didn't, wouldn't have uh, picked it up. But like, yeah, it, it's, it's true. This is now his, he's, that's clear cut. They kill children. Yeah. I mean, we saw that the little, the one, one boy was killed at the ball, but yeah, they definitely go out. They, they cull people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Entire family lines gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm uh, so, so glad you're yeah. doing this series with me. I didn't make <laughs> that connection. Makes me happy. You would have, you would have, but I'm glad I'm, I'm I'm glad I got one. Woohoo! I've got an insight. Vincent, insight. Gay. Let's go. You could just not use your alamancy. I don't know if I could do that. Because of the power? No, because of the money. Thugs, or pewter arms as the nobility prefer to call them, are the most sought after mistings. A competent thug can stand against a half dozen ordinary men, and he can lift more, endure more, and move faster than any other hired muscle. Those things mean a lot when you have to keep your crews small. Mix a couple of coin shots with five or so thugs, and you've got yourself a small mobile army. Men will pay a lot for protection like that. That actually gave me a thought. How many mistings has the crew recruited into the rebellion do you think yeah that's what i was wondering like in terms of the the rebellion army like a yeah. super soldiers yeah that would yeah. be cool yeah. something in my mind just kind of assumed that none of them are mm -hmm. but yeah. why hasn't there been any talk about getting other mistings involved yeah because he's talking about how valuable even one is so yeah, and but and he would also have other access to other thugs. Like he he's like 
top thug, right? Yeah. So he would have others, I would expect, that he could call upon. Yeah, that would that would mean trying to get everyone in the underground under one job, which is difficult as yeah. well. Because the mistings are underground people. They True. they were all scamming people or, or all doing this this and that. Um and also and their the, liability. Yeah. And yeah, they'll probably have very large egos as mm -hmm. well. And and they could have jobs with noble noblemen, which yeah, that seems like it would be a benefit, but that also makes them a liability. Mm. So it would be interesting. I, I think I'm sure we'll see the extent of how many thugs we have available to us soon. True. I also had just a great image just of like barbarian thug going like like um <laughs> ham going crazy, like throwing people and whatever. Like that that was a cool sort of imagery because you're like, yeah, you you forget that that's what thugs are about. So I yeah. would like to rage. <laughs> D &D. Be so cool. D and D. Okay. Barbarians' rage makes them strong. Mm. I will know that soonish. Okay. <laughs> Men will pay a lot for protection like that. I can see how the money would be tempting. It's more than tempting, Vin. My family doesn't have to live in packed ska tenements, nor do they have to worry about starving. My wife only works to keep up appearances. They have a good life, her ska. Once I have enough, we'll move away from the central dominance. There are places in the final empire that a lot of people don't know about. Places where a man with enough money can live the life of a nobleman. Places where you can stop worrying and simply live. That sounds appealing. Ham nodded, turning and leading them down a larger thoroughfare toward the main city gates. I got the dream from Kel, actually. That's what he always said he wanted to do. I just hope I have more luck than he did. Everyone says he was rich. Why didn't he leave? I don't know. There was always another job, each one bigger than the last. Well, like, we know that he wanted to be the greatest ska thief imaginable, right? That was mm. what he said to Vin ages ago? Yeah. That's why he wouldn't, even if he got to the, the notoriety, like, he's the top of the, the, the food chain when it comes to thieves, right? So, look, you did it. You're the best one. You're the best around. Um, You're but... the best around. <laughs> Thank you for taking that reference. And he uh, he could step out after that because he's done it, right? Step away. You've got the money because that's it. But, no, being the best around means you have to be around. So, Indeed. I guess when you're a crew leader like him, the game can get addicting. Soon the money didn't seem to matter to him. Eventually he heard that the Lord Ruler was storing some incalculable secret in that hidden sanctum of his. If he and Merritt walked away before that job... But, well, they didn't. I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't have been happy living lives where they didn't have to worry. The concept seemed to intrigue him, and Vin could see another of his questions working within his mind. I guess when you're a crew leader like him... The game can get addicting. Her earlier apprehensions returned. What would happen if Kelsier seized the Imperial throne for himself? He couldn't possibly be as bad as the Lord Ruler, but she was reading more and more of the logbook. The Lord Ruler hadn't always been a tyrant. He'd been a good man once. A good man whose life had gone wrong. Kelsier's different. He'll do the right thing. Still, she wondered. Ham might not understand, but Vin could see the enticement. Despite noble depravity, there was something intoxicating about high society. Vin was captivated by the beauty, the music, and the dancing. Her fascination wasn't the same as Kelsier's. She wasn't as interested in political games or even scams, but she could understand why he would have been reluctant to leave Luthadel behind. That reluctance had destroyed the old Kelsier, but it had produced something better, a more determined, less self-serving Kelsier. Hopefully. Of course, his plans before also cost him the woman he loved. Is that why he hates the nobility so much? Ham, has Kelsier always hated the nobility? Ham nodded. It's worse now, though. He frightens me sometimes. It seems like he wants to kill all of them, no matter who they are. I'm concerned about him, too. This 11th metal business. 
It's almost like he's making himself out to be some kind of holy man. His eyes met hers. Don't worry too much. Breeze Dox and I have already talked about this. We're going to confront Cal, see if we can rein him in a bit. He means well, but he has a tendency to go a little overboard sometimes. So what did you make of that after mm. uh, the chapter? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, that is, uh, it's it's worrying. I, I, I like that there there is there is this um, tempering factor of the of the rest of the crew on Kelsey. It's not just the Lord Ruler was just by. It seems like the Lord Ruler was by himself. He had people around him that he spoke to, but they weren't his. You know, he talks about having friends or whatever, but they, it seemed like they were not really close friends. He didn't value them that that much. They were like accessories. Whereas for Kelsia, these are real friends. So hopefully if he still views them that way and the relation, the, the friendships are strong enough, their confrontation will mean something to him. And he mm. will not turn out like the Lord Ruler. Because really we have had these parallels. We can see a, a bit of, ego coming in and things like that from Kelsey and we we have had this building suspicion that yeah he he could go down exactly the same path I mean he literally now that she used he used the word holy holy man some sort of holy man that's exactly what the Lord ruler turned into he's like became this this uh, religious figure so it's kind of it's uncomfortable and I think that's what Sanderson wants us to grapple with a little bit is how it's uncomfortable having Kelsey in this position and we don't know what's going to happen. He needs, he needs to be brought down to earth, which was one of the things you mentioned way early in the book. Did I? Yeah. You, you spoke about, okay, look, you spoke about a dark, a dark Kelsey turn that happens because Doxon dies, but that was oh, just yeah, in yeah, the yeah. beginning. Um, My favorite but, yeah. of the many theories I've come up with. <laughs> yes. So it was, it was that sort of thing that, that would, you know, send him over the edge but it's kind of like his ego is actually what sends him over the edge it seems like and this is uh, all part of his plan there's always another secret it's always another secret it would be cringe to go back and listen to myself but when we're done with the book mm -hmm. i could make a compilation of all of the predictions that we got oh, wrong so and cool. rank them mm -hmm. yes that would be cool we can do another like, live stream for it if you want. Yeah. But we'd have yeah. to we'd have to compile them and then go through them. What we think of ranking them. our failed yeah. predictions. And and the feelings we had after each of them. Like like the failed prediction in terms of uh this chapter, I'm glad everyone didn't get attacked immediately. It wasn't exactly yeah. One, failed. We knew something bad was coming. One day perhaps. <laughs> yeah. All the plans. Woohoo! Yeah. Hey, listen, we we we're, we're not we're not going to finish this anytime soon. We've got weeks and weeks yeah. to go. Yeah, but what I'm hearing you say, Kitty, is you don't think Kelsier has what it takes to be a scud. See what I did there? Oh, I get it. I'm uh, sorry. I was I went I went <laughs> into scar, and then I'm like, uh, oh, oh, she got it. I got it. Yes, very good, <laughs> very good. I I was just a bit slow. <laughs> If I didn't have that like segue about the the failed prediction thing, we would have gone straight from the conversation about Kelsier as a god into the Scott, whatever. Moving on. Would, well, either way, I right. appreciate that kind of joke all the time. Yes. <laughs> Vin nodded. Ahead, the customary crowded lines of people waited for permission to pass through the city gates. She and Ham walked quietly past the solemn group, Workers being sent out to the docks, men off to work one of the outer mills alongside the river or lake, lesser noblemen wishing to travel. All had to have a good reason to leave the city. The Lord Ruler strictly controlled travel inside his realm. Poor things. Vin thought as she passed a ragged band of children carrying pails and brushes. Man, there there are a lot of children mentioned in this chapter. More mm -hmm. than uh, I, I had initially caught on to. Noteworthy. Emotional. Yep. Yeah. probably on duty to climb the wall and scrub mist-grown leechin off of the parapets. Ahead, up near the gates, an official cursed and shoved a man out of the line. The ska worker fell hard, but eventually picked himself back up and shuffled to the end of the line. 
It was likely that if he wasn't let out of the city, he wouldn't be able to do his day's work, and no work meant no food tokens for his family. Vin followed Ham past the gates, heading down a street parallel to the city wall, at the end of which Vin could see a large building complex. Vin had never studied the garrison headquarters before. Most crew members tended to stay a good distance away from it. However, as they approached, she was impressed by its defensive appearance. Large spikes were mounted on the wall that ran around the entire complex. The buildings within were bulky and fortified. Soldiers stood at the gates, eyeing passers-by with hostility. Vin drew to a halt. Ham, how are we going to get in there? Don't worry. I'm known to the garrison. Besides, it's not as bad as it looks. The garrison members merely put on an intimidating face. As you can imagine, they aren't well-liked. Most of the soldiers in there are ska, men who have, in exchange for a better life, sold out to the Lord Ruler. Whenever there are ska riots in a city, the local garrison is usually hit pretty hard by malcontents, hence the fortifications. So what do you imagine it would be like to be an out-of-his-luck nobleman as part of the garrison when most of the garrison is ska? Oh, you're really out of your luck. <laughs> yeah. And given that we know that Kelsier was planning best laid plans of mice and ska, <laughs> given that Kelsier was planning on buying out the Luthadel garrison, you know, how well would that have gone if, you know, they're mm. also noblemen there? Yeah, poisoned. Yeah, it, I don't mm. think so. Mm. Interesting things to think about. Mm hmm. But also in terms of the scarness of the, the garrison, that also helps us. Maybe you would think, okay, well, there is a chance that enough of them would turn. True. And not given the opportunity because they just they've had no hope before, but now they've been given so so they could if they if if there's enough um of the infrastructure in shambles, they could probably um desert and not worry about it. So also true. And they could they'd probably be infighting with them as well. If if the if it turned into be like people that are willing to rebel with the rest of the rebellion, and then people that are um, that are like way too scared and just like no, we got to do our job. So we're sellouts here. We were <laughs> we doing what we were told to do. So yeah, it's not going to be all one dimensional with this garrison. Also true. Uh, Hence the fortifications. So you know these men. Ham nodded. I'm not like Breeze or Calvin. I can't put on faces and pretend. I'm just who I am. Those soldiers don't know I'm a misting, but they know I work in the underground. I've known many of these guys for years. They've consistently tried to recruit me. They generally have better luck getting people like me who are already outside mainstream society to join their ranks. But you're going to betray them. Betray? No, it won't be a betrayal. Those men are mercenaries, Vin. They've been hired to fight, and they'll attack friends, and even relatives, in a riot or rebellion. Soldiers learn to understand these kinds of things. We may be friends, but when it comes to fighting, none of us would hesitate to kill the others. Vin nodded slowly. It seemed harsh. But that's what life is. Harsh. That part of Reen's teaching wasn't a lie. Poor lads. We could have used men like them. Before I left for the caves, I managed to recruit the few that I thought would be receptive. The rest, well, they picked their path. Like me, they're only trying to give their kids a better life. The difference is they're willing to work for him in order to do it. All right. You wanted some tips on burning pewter? Vin nodded eagerly. The soldiers usually let me spar with them. You can watch me fight. Burn bronze to see when I'm using allomancy. The first most important thing you'll learn about pewter arming is when to use your metal. I've noticed that young allomancers tend to always flare their pewter, thinking that the stronger they are, the better. However, you don't always want to hit as hard as you can with each blow. Strength is a big part of fighting, but it's not the only part. If you always hit your hardest, you'll tire faster, and you'll give your opponent information about your limitations. A smart man hits the hardest at the end of the battle, when his opponent is weakest. And in an extended battle, like a war, the smart soldier is the one who survives the longest. He'll be the man who paces himself. Vin nodded. But don't you tire slower when you're using alamancy? Yes. In fact, a man with enough pewter can keep fighting at near-peak efficiency for hours. 
But pewter dragging like that takes practice, and you'll run out of metals eventually. When you do, the fatigue could kill you. Anyway, what I'm trying to explain is that it's usually best to vary your pewter burning. If you use more strength than you need, you could knock yourself off balance. Also, I've seen thugs who rely on their pewter so much that they disregard training and practice. Pewter enhances your physical abilities, but not your innate skill. If you don't know how to use a weapon, or if you aren't practiced at thinking quickly in a fight, you'll lose no matter how strong you are. Loved that. Great mm. lesson. Yes. As expected from him. Indeed. I'll have to be extra careful with the garrison, since I don't want them to know I'm an Alamancer. You'll be surprised at how often that's important. Watch how I use pewter. I won't just flare it for strength. If I stumble, I'll burn it to give me an instant sense of balance. When I dodge, I might burn it to help me duck out of the way a little faster. There are dozens of little tricks you can do if you know when to give yourself a boost. Vin nodded. Uh, at this point, I was like, yes, please, I want to see this. I was so excited to see this happen. I really was. Yes. Oh, let's see what happens. Okay, let's go then. I'll tell the garrison that you're the daughter of a relative. You look young enough for your age that they won't think twice. Watch me fight, and we'll talk afterward. Finn nodded again, and the two of them approached the garrison. Ham waved to one of the guards. Hey, Bevedon, I've got the day off. Is Certs around? He's here, Ham. But I don't know that this is the best day for sparring. Oh? Bevedon shared a glance with one of the other soldiers. Go fetch the captain, he said to the man. A few moments later, a busy-looking soldier approached from a side building, waving as soon as he saw Ham. His uniform bore a few extra stripes of color and a few gold-colored bits of metal on the shoulder. Ham, the newcomer said, stepping through the gate. Certs, Ham said with a smile, clasping hands with the man. Captain now, eh? Happened last month, Certs said, nodding once. Then he eyed Vin. She's my niece. Good lass. Certs nodded. Could we speak alone for a moment, Ham? Ham shrugged and let himself get pulled to a more secluded place beside the complex gates. Finn's allomancy let her make out what they were saying. What did I ever do without Tin? Look, Ham, you won't be able to come spar for a while. The garrison is going to be... occupied. Occupied? How? I can't say. But, well, we could really use a soldier like you right now. Fighting? Yeah. Must be something serious if it's taking the attention of the entire garrison. Certs grew quiet for a moment, and then he spoke again in a hushed tone, so soft that Finn had to strain to hear. A rebellion, right here in the Central Dominance. We just got word. An army of Ska rebels appeared and attacked the whole steppe garrison to the north. Vin felt a sudden chill. And so did I! <laughs> yeah, I was like, what the fuck? So... Oh handful of things that ran through my mind. One, what did Yedin do was one of the thoughts. Oh shit, um, what happened to Yedin was another <laughs> thought. Mm -hmm. The third thought was there couldn't be a second rebellion that we don't know about, could there? That's be? what I was having. I was having that thought again this time around. Because uh, I, I had all of those uh, the first time, and then I'm like, just that sec that last one came through again on this route of read through. I'm like, what if it's if it's um the 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 guys from the beginning? Oh, <laughs> yeah, um, good yeah. menace. Yeah, menace. Come on, menace. But um, uh, <laughs> but it, that would be quite interesting, quite serendipitous. What on earth would would cause that to happen or was was that Cal Kelsey's other plan or something that he couldn't really talk about or all of the questions none of the answers wow the same thing every single time every single chapter I think it's either that something bad happened to Yedin or Yedin is just being really really stupid right now overly confident any... as we yeah. last left him yeah maybe that that's what it is yeah um I can I can see that happening I, I don't think Kelsia is involved in this because he literally no. was just thinking about moving Breeze over there. So it, it lends itself to that being the, the that being what happened because he was worried about it. It, he was it worried can't about the state of it. like it can't have been Yedin willy nilly because he knows 
the plan regarding the pits yeah. of Hafsin, which yeah. makes me wonder if maybe Yedin was in a position where he wasn't leading as well as he might have hoped and the lost control. lost control. And in order to assert himself as leader, he felt he has to get some sort of victory sooner rather than later. So he went and did this, which would be incredibly foolish or the other, well, yeah. Or the other fear is that they ousted Yedin and then did what they did. Another one for the theory compilation, but not, I don't know about <laughs> theory failed theory, just theory compilation, not failed. Sounds good. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. 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 What? Ham said. They must have come from the caves up there. Last word was that the whole step fortifications are holding, but Ham, they are only a thousand men strong. They need reinforcements desperately, and the Kolos will never get there in time. The Valtro garrison sent 5,000 soldiers, but we're not going to leave it to them. This is apparently a very large force of rebels, and the Lord Ruler gave us permission to go help. Ham nodded. So what about it? Real fighting, Ham. Real battle pay. We could really use a man of your skill. I'll make you an officer right now. Give you your own squad. I... I'll have to think about it, Ham said. He wasn't good at hiding his emotions, and his surprise sounded suspicious to Vin. Certs, however, didn't appear to notice. Don't take too long. We plan to march out in two hours. I'll do it, Ham said, sounding stunned. Let me go drop off my niece and get some things. I'll be back before you leave. Good man, Sertz said, and Vin could see him clap Ham on the shoulder. Our army is exposed. They're not ready. They were supposed to take Luthadel quietly, quickly, not face the garrison straight out. Those men are going to get massacred. What happened? What happened indeed? What happened? And uh, I'll reiterate, I think this sets off the race. I think mm -hmm. Kelsier and the crew will have to like rush to do the heist now while the garrison's out. Yeah, they I do. Yeah, we have to do it. We have to uh, that was the, the the plan. Well, that was the 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 step before. So now that this step has come without them planning it oh i don't know i'm just basically i'm just i'm, I'm scared i wanted to i want they, i think you're right they have to go ahead and do the heist otherwise they won't get a with i don't think they'll get another chance yeah um uh, or or this is a lie <gasps> but i don't know i don't think so um what do you think yeah, of ham's think ham's flippity flop i inherently assumed that he was doing it as a method of trying to protect the mm -hmm. rebellion. I, like, I think he'll get there and either defect from the garrison or he will attempt to resolve things peacefully in some way mm -hmm. or something. something. He, he, he yeah. certainly has not betrayed the crew in any way, shape or form. No, no, he definitely hasn't. And he's, he, uh, that, uh, that, that didn't cross my mind at all. It was more like he, he, he's definitely made an impulsive decision. Like, cause he literally, thought about it a little bit and then he's like you know what i'll do it it's fine i'll do it you know because he's like he probably has that maybe it's better that i'm part of this and also better that he's part of it because that also shows it isn't a lie so mm -hmm. um yeah so look i don't want him to be part of that i don't want him to go to be in harm's way but yeah he's gonna be That's so help me man. sanderson if something bad happens <laughs> to him <laughs> we we burn the books <laughs> <laughs> No, if something happens to him, we will cry. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I know I will, Dorcas, I don't think you'll cry, but I will. I will shed a single manly tear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the only kind of tear that a man may shed is only the single, the single one. That's it. True. So. I, I really you, did have... like this chapter. It was good. Yeah. I, um. It's it's the pace has been quickened. We we had a we had a nice warm fuzzy, but then it's like, oh damn, another one, another one that is just like I have to read immediately after we finished recording. Like I, I'm not I'm not gonna have any time to, you know, I'm I'm not gonna do any housework or anything like that. I'm reading. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm going to as well. I'm so excited. But quick, yeah. while the race is on, I need everyone listening to this to run over to Kite's channel and hit the subscribe button because she's got a wonderful channel where she does panel shows. She does diagrams. She does other things, probably. So <laughs> hurry, Whatever comes quick. to mind. No, we'll be no, here wait, when you wait. get back. No, 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 no. You, you, you bet. Wait. The only way that you can go is if you've already liked this video and you've already subscribed and you've already turned on your notifications. If you have done all of that, then you can hop over to Chaos, the channel. If you want. No pressure I mean, whatsoever. Thank you for listening. We'll yeah. See you next time. Thank you. Can I see you next time. Bye. Okay. So we had just ended the recording folks and then i was like you know what we've got time let's do a blind read through we're so, doing it live we're doing it live so <laughs> stay tuned next week folks so yeah okay thanks bye again bye hey may, once that's going in the in the in the bloopers cut i love that <laughs> If only read, read. If only read. Why did they read? <laughs> Stop. Okay. If only Reen could have have known that. Okay, I start. I was very happy that I got through Reen, but then <laughs> <laughs> that part of Reen's treat. Uh,